Hey, everybody. Welcome to How To Tuesday. Today, we're going to answer a question that we got on podcast at saltwaterexperience.com. That's a dedicated email address. You can also text me at 305-930-7346. That is the dedicated text line. And a lot of the content that we use on How To Tuesday and Physical Fridays really uh, come from those two places. This one is an uh, the second part of a question that Bob Johnson wrote last week. He asked about the uh, non-slip mono loop versus the perfection loop knot. And we tested those two last last time. He says, also, what is the comparative knot strength of the non-slip mono loop, the perfection knot, perfection loop knot, and the figure eight loop knot for 60 and 80 pound fluorocarbon to tarpon flies? Okay. So, 60 and 80 pound. Uh, Good question. I don't really know that I can even break those knots right here on that. So what I chose to do is use 40 and 50 pound J fluoro just um, for the sake of being able to to break them. I have prepared uh, 40 and 50 in the non-slip mono loop, 40 and 50 in the perfection loop, and 40 and 50 in the double figure eight. So we will test those with the next tech um, tester and I'm going to have to put on gloves and I'm going to have to pull really, really hard um, because these knots are the terminal end knot for a shock tippet. So what that means, a shock tippet, if you're not familiar with what a shock tippet is or a bite tippet, sometimes it's called, uh, you'll use, you know, 20 pound line or 10 pound line or whatever. And if a fish has, sharp teeth or rough mouth, um, you'll use a a heavier piece right to the line. The IGFA allows 12 inches for world records. If you're doing it on your own, um, you can use how much ever you want, but 12 inches is a good guideline. If you're going to set uh, a record for tarpon, where this is a very standard tarpon leader uh, that goes to a heavier piece right at the fly so that you can protect the light tippet uh, from the rough mouth of a tarpon. You wouldn't land very many tarpon if you didn't use a, a, a bite tippet or a shock tippet, as they're called. So we're going to test. The first one we're going to test is the non-slip mono loop at 40 pound. And I'm going to pull on this one, wrap it around with the gloves. And I have no idea where it's going to break. Wow. So that one was... Pretty strong, 40-pound non-slip mono loop broke at 40.05 pounds. So that is one of the good things about this type of a scale is that if it breaks and flies off the table like that just happened, um, it will retain the last reading. That's why I like this scale so much. So it's the non-slip mono loop at 40 um, broke at 40.05, okay? So now we're going to go with the 50 pound non slip mono loop and see where that breaks. Again, we're probably going to pull it right off the table. Okay. See where that one broke. Now that's interesting. You know, knots, knots break at different strengths depending on how they're tied, probably. But with 50 pound, it broke at 38.4. So we may. Just choose to throw that one out if, you know, that's the case where it broke really, really light and all the rest are breaking heavy. We're going to go with the 40-pound perfection loop now. Okay. 40-pound perfection loop broke at 35.26. Perfection. 35.26. We'll go with the 50-pound perfection loop. 50-pound perfection loop breaks at 40.37 pounds. Okay, and now we'll go with the double figure eight. 40. Double figure eight, 40. Breaks at 30.88 pounds and the 50. Double figure eight 50. Uh, 
That one didn't feel like it broke very, very strong. <clears throat> 32.83. Okay. So that's all of them. And it appears that the non-slip mono loop probably probably um, performed the best out of that test. The perfection loop was surprisingly strong, and the double figure eight was maybe the weakest, or definitely was the weakest knot here. But I want to put this in perspective because you're using um, a shock tippet. So whatever we're tying, we're breaking, this stuff is breaking it. The lowest that we saw was about 30 pound. So if you're using 15 pound or 10 pound or 20 pound, this knot is going to break at more than your, your class leader. So you may choose to pick your knot for your tarpon leader or your heavier leader based upon other things than not breaking strength. For example, I like the not the double figure eight loop because it hangs perfectly straight. It doesn't cock off to the side and make your fly swim a little bit funny. Um, that's one of the reasons. The perfection loop has a right angle um, has a right angle tag end which tends to collect grass on it. I don't particularly like that. So I may choose a weaker knot, a knot that I know is weaker, based upon other factors like where the tag end lays or how straight the knot pulls. Um, but the question was, what's the knot breaking strength? And so I, I did it. I answered it. I don't really like doing these with the super heavy leader because it's hard to break and, and uh, the, the scale flies off the table every time. But Bob... That's that's what we came up with. It looks to me as though the uh, the non-slip mono loop and the perfection loop outperformed the double figure eight. But you make the you make the decision. And as always, as we're doing these things, I suggest that you also test these knots at your you know testing ground in your garage in your workroom wherever with the type of line that you're going to use uh, and and get it as close to your fishing situation as possible and tie the knots the way that you do on a daily basis in order for you to determine what knot you should use the best. These are these are the way that I tie them and that might could possibly be different than the way that you tie them. But if you have a good scale that you can test them on, that's the best way. What we're doing here is controlling the controllable. You can control the controllable. You can become a much, much better fisherman. You can determine what knots are best for the type of fishing that you're doing while you're at home before you even get on the water. So you're already operating at a 20% advantage, 30%, sometimes 50% advantage before you ever even get out on the water because you know your knots are going to be strong. You know your rigging's perfect. You know that you you have upgraded the knots that you used to use and now you're using stronger knots. That means that you have a better chance of landing that fish of a lifetime. That means you have a better chance of landing any fish. So controlling and controllable is a major thing about what we're doing here on How To Tuesday, especially when we're testing these knots. So Bob, thank you for uh, sending in that question. If you have questions, you can send in your questions to podcast at saltwaterexperience.com. That's the dedicated email address. And the text number is 305-930-7346. You can send me those questions and maybe I will do them on a future How To Tuesday or Physical Friday. All right, that's it for today. We'll see you next week.